This is a unboxing guest testing of the Mega Loop MLA 30 Plus. This is a um, 0.5 to 30 megahertz loop antenna, and it's meant for shortwave reception, uh, AM, the broadcast band. I have a software defined radio that it comes with a stock antenna, something like this, and it doesn't work quite that well. I've also tried a Sanjin, uh, you know, it's just a 23 foot wire. It doesn't work that well. What we're gonna do is test this radio out and show you how well it works. So first and foremost, we are using a SDR Play RSP1A. This is just a the cheap, cheapest one they make. This is a single tuner. It's USB powered. It has a frequency range of one kilohertz all the way up to two gigahertz. No gaps in the coverage. You can just tune straight through. Um, that's everything. So I, I was interested in this mate primarily for shortwave reception. I've always been a, uh, a DXer, they call it, which is a person who listens to distant uh, broadcasts and stuff. So I picked this up and I've owned cheap ones. You can get cheap ones. Uh, but anyway, the stock antennas don't seem to work. Um, so that back to the antenna. The uh, loop, the ML30 Plus, does come with this little LNA, a low noise amplifier. And what you do is you run the one wire goes from your receiver into the little amp. And from the amp, it goes to the antenna, which has a very long wire. So you have a short wire and then a long wire. Now, it does require power. It can be powered in two ways. One can be powered with the micro USB, and two, it can be powered with biasing T. Biasing T is a technology that, I guess, recently came out, I guess, where you can get power from the antenna port. So the device itself will inject power. And I see why this isn't working, yeah will inject power into the unit, light up the LED, and power it so it can actually get an ampli amplification. Well, I have biasing T right here on the software. This is, by the way, uh, SDR Uno. I turn it on. Okay, I got no light. Let me hit play. And four, and only moving at nine miles an hour. Imagine if you've got 150. Still no light, so that's not working. But what I'm gonna show you is with the amplifier and this antenna, by the way, it's picking up pretty good. With the amplifier and the antenna, you pick up a lot of signals. And I just got this. So I put it together because nothing to do here. We're waiting for this hurricane shit to finish. So first we'll put it on and with the amp off, just an un, you know, it's basically a passive antenna. Feet of rain possible around Daytona Beach. Power you can see rapidly expanding to at least how tall the signal is. Statewide. How much signal you're getting here? For now, is the area getting the worst of the okay, end? This is like Florida. negative 90. We're going to plug in the USB. And now look at it. We are up at negative 40. So I'm getting a lot more channels. This is 910, which is a local station. I don't know if they're on the air anymore with this hurricane. Not getting any signal from them. It's just blank. You know, anyway, the point is you can Come on, stand here. You can pick any band you want. Ham band, upper, lower, broadcast band. And then once you pick that, you'll see that the uh, range changes. So 600 to 1700, let's say. You know, it all, it all changes depending on what you're listening to. 
So this is a pretty cool device, uh, and it really, the whole point of a software-defined radio is you can basically have a really powerful radio that doesn't have, doesn't cost much because you're using the computer power to do all the work of a very high-end, expensive, um, you know, receiver. These didn't exist years and years ago, and when they did, they were, I don't know, twenty thousand dollars or something crazy like that. But the fact that you're using the computer now, it's all USB. It's awesome. So I have yet to learn how to use this software. Um, it is extremely complicated, but uh, basically you can spy on any frequency. So, you know, that short wave, you can hear uh, transmitters and stuff, that you, all kinds of things. And it's just, it's all out there. You just don't know it until you see it on the spectrum itself with the little waterfall and then also the signal strength. You can see it and you just click and listen to it. I have no idea what channels the ham people are talking on, but uh, if I can figure out how to change the channel. Yeah, I haven't figured that part out yet. Yeah, I don't even know how to use this software yet. That's one thing I'm going to probably do in the next week or so. But anyway, this antenna seems to work pretty well. Um, I'm going to give it more of a test, though, on other frequencies. Uh, so if you're interested, I'll probably do another video upcoming weeks or so. Thanks for watching.